Hello, people of the world watching correlated internet videos. Welcome to this. My 1974 RA21 Toyota Celica containing a fully forged cammed naturally aspirated 2UZ VVTi V8 from my dad's 2005 Toyota Tundra. If you're new and you like to get caught up on this giant pile of Toyota wiring and understand why this is happening, up above is either a link to that video or a delicious recipe for robot ramen noodles. Initially, I was going to try to utilize the original Toyota engine harness so that way I could retain the factory wire colors. However, due to the law of shapes, a 2005 Toyota Tundra's engine bay is not the same as a 1974 Toyota Celica's engine bay. What you see here is my master plan that I came up with when I rewired my MR2's engine harness from scratch for the standalone engine management system. It was kind of a hodgepodge wiring schematic diagram and theory of of operation all combined into one board. And essentially, I'm gonna replicate the exact same process for the 2UZ. Yeah, sweet. Love it, love it, love it. All brand new Sumitomo connectors to include all of the pins and little rubber butt plugs that go with them, which will be accompanied by Two brand new harnesses to go with the new ECU, which I purchased on Jimmy Oaks' website. He's a fellow automotive YouTuber that just recently became a dad. So shout out to Papa Oaks. Which means I should have everything I need now to wire up this TUZ into the Sally Cup. I gotta account for all the wiring that's gonna go to it. It's actually not as big as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> uh, the ECU itself is like the size of a piece of bread, so it's not very big. I might actually be able to fit it under there. Determining this placement first is key because I gotta route all my wires and determine their lengths accordingly. Don't mind my dashboard being dusty, it'll clean up. When I bought this car, there was a CB radio mounted exactly right here. And I already have like a mount for something this exact same size and all my wiring right here for the factory harness is there. Papa Pui. Aha, Pui. Indicator lamp. Honestly, the easiest way to unknot this stuff is just to de-pin whatever wires are tangled and then pull it through. So this is the headlight harness. I quickly started to realize that this was going to be impossible with the harness attached to the car still. There's a large percentage of this wiring that I don't need anymore. Like, it'd be way easier to just start with all this stuff out of the engine bay. Which meant that this went from being a simple task of oh, unknotting wires to completely removing the harness from up underneath the dashboard of this car. Come on. Ouch, why is something really sharp under here? Which I was really trying to avoid doing because I didn't want to have to take apart the dash or instrument cluster unless I absolutely had to since it's so old. Oh, this is so much wire. I'm sorry my fat head's blocking your camera view. Ah, that wasn't so bad. This would be way easier. I should just unplug. What the hell? Ouch. The one thing that stands out to me the most when working on this car is just how astonishingly high the build quality was in 1974 on this Celica. Soldered on? Yes, this is soldered on. Well, that's a huge pain. Oh man, my flashlight died. Oh no. Backup flashlight, don't fail me now. Good. Oh, come on. Is it? Ouch. One. There we go. I think it's attached to the back of the gauge cluster. Even though I'm adding some complexity to this vehicle by putting an engine in it from 2005, it's still not new enough to have that complex of wiring. And the stuff underneath this dash is so simple to figure out. It'll be easy when I put this back together. There are two primary junctions. One goes up over the steering column. The other one goes into abyss. Surprisingly, these plastic connectors are still in great condition. Disconnect, please. Got it. If I undo the speedometer cable, it'll make my life way easier. I didn't want to have to do this. There's no way to do it without dropping the steering column. My initial master plan was to leave all the original gauge cluster stuff intact and just attach whatever wires I needed in the bay to make the gauges work and then OCD kicked in. It's kind of good that this is happening though because this car did have an aftermarket stereo in it as well as it had the CB under the dash. I think that's everything holding this in. So by taking this apart, it gives me a chance to inspect the harness for the aftermarket radio as well as clean things up under the dash a bit. Holy crap, there's so much wiring for these gauges. Ta-da! 
The rest of the engine harness is free. Ha! Victory! It's the next day. There's two different paths I can take to do this. And the way that makes the most sense is to start with the roots. The Sarah knows where the wire came from because the Sarah knows where the wire didn't come from. Uh, wait a minute, not me. <laughs> I found the factory ECU. It's got six wires, emissions control. Brake switch, red, white, green, white. So this is gonna be for my brake lights and also possibly for the brake warning light circuit. Yellow, red, yellow, green. Yellow, red, yellow, green. Yellow, red, yellow, green. Yellow, red. This may look like fun and games in a couple second clip in a YouTube video, but I actually sat here doing this for several hours. This cluster right here goes up to the ignition. This is all key on. So the green wires, the white stripe are gonna be my key on power. So they'll have potential when the key is on. It's pretty much a rinse and repeat process. Once I go through all of the circuits and identify the stuff that I no longer need, I have to peel back the loom, which was in perfect condition. It kind of hurt my heart a little bit to have to do this. Whoa, that stuff looks like it's moving. But what it does do though, is give me an ability to further inspect the condition of this wiring, which it's shockingly in phenomenal shape for its age. That took about a half hour to unwrap all that tape. They do a really good job at the factory. The fact that it held up 50 years like that. That's sticky. Sticky, icky, icky. Just seeing a big old ass. This is for my AC compressor. This is for the vacuum switching valve. Alternator. In the case of the RATA chassis Celicas, a lot of the wiring in the engine harness isn't actually even for the engine. Half of it goes just to the lighting in the front of the car. This is why aftermarket security systems suck. Especially ones from 1974. I was wondering why my engine harness was so messy and I had a bunch of splices that did not look factory. And then there's a sticker on the windshield that says protected by security system. This had a dealer installed alarm on it. So now 50 years later, I get to undo a dealership hack job. all the factory electronic stuff. On top of this squirrely ass alarm wiring, uh, this bundle of fuckery is for the factory voltage regulator. I don't think it would be as messy if it wasn't for the alarm. I think a lot of the alarm stuff ties into this area. This guy right here. Now after all that work, I can get back to what I was initially doing before I ripped this out of the car. You know, fish this thing all the way through this harness. A vacuum switching valve. This is now obsolete. I am loving the fact that this harness is made up of the super old school style connectors that are really easy to deep pin. Yay, now this is free, kind of. <sighs> Come on. White with blue. All eyes on me. Someone got that reference. Oh, leave this plug on the last wire. This makes it way more easier for identifying. Here we go. Now after all that work, I can get back to what I was initially doing before I ripped this out of the car. Voltage regulator. It's not really necessary for me to physically label each one of these circuits with a piece of tape, but it does make it a lot easier to have a second visual reference. But making a full color legend on my dry erase board is a whole nother level of excessive. And I'm honestly just doing it because I like whiteboards. Ta-da! It took about four hours to do, but I have the factory RE21 engine harness broken down into individual circuits now. So you got your battery alternator starter voltage regulator circuit, which the voltage regulator is going away since it's gonna be a self-exciting alternator, so I can ditch a bunch of that crap. The blue group is because this was an 18RC, if you know what I mean. And this little colorful bunch is critical. This is all the stuff for the gauges to work on the dash. This is what was most important for me to integrate into the new standalone harness. The red group is purely headlights. Green group is marker lights and turn signals. And the two little yellow wires, not really a group, that went to the voltage regulator also. My highly accurate emoji is of a alternator a starter and a, a toilet bowl. Now that this is easily digestible and broken down into groups, the stuff that is not used on the 2UZ must be deleted. Updating the alternator circuit from the original 18R is gonna be fairly easy. I need to ditch 
all of this voltage regulator group. I wrapped everything up into little bundles to keep things neat and tidy so this doesn't become a tangled mess. From alternator to voltage regulator, this white with green goes directly to the alternator, which would be this plug for the alternator. I got a solid white wire, which is this big fat one. It doesn't seem like much, but for now, this is all the stuff that I know 100% will not be needed on the 2UZ because it's just completely different. I mean, it's got some girth to it. That's, that's quite a bit of copper. The Celica from the factory had a decent amount of gauges to monitor engine stuff. It has an ammeter, an oil pressure gauge, a coolant temp gauge, and obviously fuel gauge, as well as there is an array of warning lights that are built into the cluster itself. More often than not, when people do resto mods on 60s and 70s era cars, they typically outfit them with more modern digital gauges. And to me, that detracts from the originality and the nostalgia feel you get from driving a car of that era. So I am going to make the original gauges function with the modern 2UZ V8. This was a much better decision than trying to do this. This will be way cleaner. This booklet is critical. It's essentially my wiring diagram for the car in the future. Same thing I have with the MR2, so that way if I ever have to work on it, I know exactly what does what and where it goes to the ECM. I got eight feet of wire here. Almost reached the ECU. Ensuring that I give myself plenty of extra. So this is my plug right here. ECU is gonna be over here. So this is more than enough extra. So I know where it needs to be in relation to the firewall. I can wrap some tape around it. That way, if I start pulling on it, I know I've gone too far. I wanna replicate an OEM look as much as possible. So I'm using the original tie downs for the harness. These guys right here are the factory wire harness hold downs. I don't want this thing getting all crazy with the cheese whiz. This is bank one and cylinder one right here. So I'm gonna put ignition one there and it's kind of self-explanatory after that. So blue. And then this naturally wrapped up over the top of the engine from the factory. Bank one, cylinder one, uh, it's all blue. Okay, it's all blue, blue and brown, sneaky. I'm gonna put the injector wires right next to that coil because the injector rail's pretty close. Cylinder two, brown, blue, that rhymes. The easiest way to screw this up is to get ahead of yourself and to start cutting wires and adding plugs early on sensor by sensor because you may change your routing as you go along and find better ways to do it or you may have to adapt the route just to make other sensors work. So don't ever do that. I don't necessarily have to follow that chart exactly because I can go into the ECU and change these wires to do whatever I want them to do as long as it's the same input or output type of circuit. I could have went all fancy pants and did one bank with one and one bank with the other, but that would have not been fancy. All the rear cylinders use this for their signals. Oh man, can I not get it through there? Uh, yeah, that's about the same right there. I'm sure someone's screaming in all caps lock in the comment section right now because I'm not shaving and tucking the bay. You can tuck your shaved feet in your bay's belly button. <laughs> Blau and yellow. And it was all yellow. <laughs> it's a long wire. Ignition Zeben. Blue black. Blue black. Take this from being squirrely. While this may seem easy and straightforward, there's gonna be a massive wrench thrown into the process when I integrate the relay in fuse box into the engine bay. Brown purple. So this right here is the only fuse box this car had, and it was in the driver footwell area, which is only a few inches from this hole where it goes into the engine bay. And this is how you do it right. It's a genuine Toyota old logo part that will fit perfectly in this engine bay and contain everything I need to make this work. Now for the shielded wires. These go in the valley of the block. Knock sensor one, knock sensor two. I desperately need to figure out my coolant bridge, my heater core pipes, my thermostat housing, and my throttle body, like now. Coolant bridge, coolant bridge. I really don't wanna do this. It's just gonna be big and ugly, but I don't really have a choice. It's now the fourth day in this video, which means I'm kind of falling behind, but I have an important part that just arrived, not this. This disgusting barnacle, which absolutely needs to be cleaned up, sits right inside here. So many of you have asked what I was gonna do about this, and the solution is 
Now, this is not sponsored, obviously, because I just love going broke buying parts constantly. What it is, though, is the correct brand of radiator to go in this car. If you know, you know. Oh, that's nice. And it is actually meant for this chassis. It is the correct radiator for this car, but it is a dual core, all aluminum upgrade. Just picture when this is all scuffed and redone in satin black paint right here and the engine bay is painted body color. It's gonna, oh, it's gonna look so good. I definitely have room still here for electric fans, but this routing for cooling hoses is not ideal. And the thermostat housing area, this is excessive and just that's not gonna work either. Oh geez. A smart human being would take this off of the engine. <laughs> That's what a smart person would do. Making things easier for filming doesn't always mean it makes it easier for working. Oh yeah, it's fine. I could totally reuse that. If only Mazda would have designed this thing, I'd be able to do what I need to do. Shapes don't like to do shape things when they've been shaped wrong. I was looking at this all wrong. Is your mother so stabula soldering iron? The factory Toyota Tundra radiator is essentially a mirror image of the one in the Celica. The upper pipe is on the driver's side and the lower pipe is on the passenger side of his best friend's ride. Trying to holler at me. <laughs> this doesn't actually need to get modified. It'll work fine because the factory Tundra radiator hose curves down and goes all the way down to the pipe on the bottom. And then for the upper one, same, same. All this has to do is get relocated right here and it's a straight shot radiator hose. While it's unrelated, I know if someone's going to ask for cooling fans, I'm going to run a slim fan right here and another slim fan right here. That way they taper downward right here where the balancer is at. They'll stick out probably about that far. I also can come out with this uh, shapes, shapes. I can also come out a little bit with a radiator right around there because keep in mind this is the front of the hood right here so I still have all this space behind the grill that I can move the radiator forward if need be. As much as I'd love to continue working on this I have to play rotato potato with my shop to be able to fit press cars in here do two car reviews for you this week. So I got a lot of work ahead. Anyway, the next video on this, I should have the fuse box and we'll start doing that part of the wiring and getting this closer to finished up. The wiring harness part, that is. There clearly there's a lot of work left still to do. I'm, try I'm doing this as fast as I can without being sloppy. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.